YouTube Official Gaming Network and welcome to episode 23 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we implemented a damaging system into our game. This episode we will implement pipes into our game. So what the pipes are is that we could just pretty much stand on them, press the down button, uh, we'll just go through the pipes and we'll end up in another room. And this is going to be a two-parter because I'm once again busy and I don't have enough time to record and explain what the second part will be. So in this part we're just going to be creating our pipes and implementing the basic feature where we press S to go down our pipes and yeah that will pretty much be it. So what we're going to do because we're going to be creating a new tile we're going to go into our tile package, we're going to right click, create a new class, and we're going to call it pipe. And of course, because it's a tile, we need to make it extend tile. And just add the constructor and add the abstract methods, render and tick. Just get rid of these comments and the override things, because we don't really need them. Alright, and we're going to create another parameter in the constructor and it's going to be called facing. So just after handler handler, just make another parameter and it's going to be an integer called facing. And we'll type this dot facing is equal to facing. But because facing isn't actually a variable yet, we've got to go into our tile and create it. So under public int val x val y, we're going to type public int facing and just put a semicolon on the end of the line. And we're going to create another variable, but this time in our entity class. So going to so just go into our entity class and I'm going to create a boolean and it's going to be called going down pipe. And of course, that will equal to false. Going down pipe is equal to false. Now, we're going to go into our player class and just create one more variable and it's going to be called pixels traveled so private private int pixels traveled is equal to zero and in our pipe class uh, because I'm busy I couldn't be bothered making a sprite so I'm just gonna set the color to a green color so it's I'll give us a nice green color and we're gonna fill rect x y with height like we usually do. So just right click on uh, just any of these and click close all just so we don't have too much classes in this little bar here. Whoops. Yeah, just so we don't have too much classes in this little bar here just to be a bit more clean and organized. So just close our package and we're gonna go into our key input class and we're going to create another case. Oh, where did my console go? There we go. Alright, under case key event dot vkw, we're going to create another case. And of course, it'll be case key event dot vks. And of course, at the end, we have to break the switch. And we're going to create a for loop for int q. Now, why we can't uh, make another in i for loop is because i is already an integer and uh, Java will pretty much get mixed up with which i is supposed to be used for what and so it will give us an error. So some people like to use j as a sort of substitute but I like to use q. You can use j if you want. You just have to change the q to j whenever I use q. So int q is equal to zero, q is less than game.handler.entity.sar q++ we've done this before, you guys should know what we're doing yeah just but actually, oh uh, no it's supposed to be game.handler.tile I'm going to create a tile so a tile t is equal to game.handler.tile.get q 
And of course, because we're using Q in our for loop, we have to put Q instead of I, like we usually do here and other for loops. Now we're going to type if t dot id is equal to id dot pipe. And uh, because we haven't created a pipe constant in id, we're just going to just hover over your pipe or where the error is and yeah, just uh, click on create enum constant pipe in id. Just close id, set the changes, and there we go. Now we're going to create another if statement. If en referring to our player. So in dot get bounds bottom dot intersects t dot get bounds. Now we're going to create another if statement inside of that. If en dot going down pipe is not equal to true. So pretty much if our going down pipe boolean isn't equal to true. Then we're going to set going down pipe for our player equal to true. It's equal to true. And because when we're going down our pipe, we don't want to move left or right or jump to interfere with sort of our transition. Uh, before our switch, we're just going to type if en dot going down pipe is equal to true, then turn. So pretty much get out of this entire key press method and don't execute any of the code below, just ignore that code. Okay, and now we're go, going to go into our player class. I'm going to create if statement under if lx is not equal to zero. If going down part is equal to true. Then we're going to create a for loop like we usually do. Nice Tile dot size i plus plus create our tile and then check if our tiles id is equal to id dot pipe all right then in our if statement we're going to create a switch and the switch will be of our tiles facing integer. So case zero. So in case zero, we're going to type set val y. Let's make it negative five. And then of course we have to break. Then case two. Set val y. Then just five. Oops, just have to fix that spelling mistake. Then of course we need to break our switch. So what this is doing, if our tiles facing integer is equal to zero, then it will set our val y integer equal to negative five. So, so when we're going into that pipe, it will be a pipe that leads upwards. Okay, all right, so that's a pretty much our switch done. So just go below our switch, and we're gonna create an if statement. If pixels traveled is greater than t dot height plus height and if that's true then going going down pipe will equal to false and we're going to go into our uh, jumping if statement and after jumping we're going to type and going down pipe is equal to false because yeah we don't want jumping to affect us when going down when we're going down our pipe We'll do the same for falling, all right? And our t dot is solid if statement. So now we're going to go below our y plus equals val y, and we're going to create an if statement. If going down, going down pipe, then we're going to add the value of val y to pixels traveled. So pixels traveled plus equals val y. Or pixels traveled. So now we're going to go into our level image. Now we're going to create two pipes. One's RGB value will be 0, 1, 28, 0. And let's put it on the side up there. So actually, we'll just put it like this because we'll set the height to be the value of 15 by 64. 
and we're going to make another pipe, but this RGB value will be 01260 instead of 01280. And we'll just put that uh, here. Alright, and we'll just sort of create a little wall. So, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And we'll just create a small room there. Alright, no big deal. Okay. And while we set the pipe that's going down, so green value equal to 126, and the pipe going up, so green value equal to 128, is because because just after I, I explain this and export this image in our handler class, we're going to set the pipe's facing variable equal to 128 minus the green value. So if the variable facing is 0, then the green value has to be 128 because 128 minus 128 is equal to zero, and uh, our damp our down pipes facing variable will have to equal to two, and the difference between 128 and 126 is two. Hope you guys get that. So I'm just gonna export this image. Yep, replace the already existing one. Refresh our package folder. And of course, go into our handler class and do our usual. Just that we're going to do things a bit differently because of the because of what I just explained before about our pipe's green value. So we're going to type if red is equal to zero, and put this in brackets. Green is greater than 123, and green is less than 129. Be sure to put this code in brackets, by the way. And blue is equal to zero. Then we'll just add a tile, new pipe, x by 64, y by 64. The width will be 64, but the height will be 64 by 15. Uh, our pipes is a solid object, so we'll set solid equal to true. The ID is id dot pipe this referring to the handler and the facing value will be 128 minus green and of course we just need to import pipe import the right pipe con.tutorial.mario.tile.pipe instead of java.nile.no java channels.pipe whatever that is never even heard of it and we're going to go into our game class and you know when we go down our pipe our camera doesn't follow with us until we come out of the pipe yeah, we're pretty much going to implement that now. So in our tick method, in our game class, we're going to type, before we call our camera's tick method, we're going to create if statements. If e dot going down pipe is equal to false, then our camera will tick. Alright, so I tested my game and uh, I saw a bug when we try to go down our pipe. It actually goes up. That's because we need to make another if statement before our switch and uh, of course you'll be checking if our get bounds bottom rectangle is colliding with our pipe so if get bounds bottom dot intersect t to get bounds then we'll make that an if statement and just copy all our stuff into here Right, so now let's run our game. Alright, so just kill that Goomba. Okay, actually, I just realized uh, after our set val, after we call our set val y method, we're just going to set our val x equal to zero in case we're moving left or right while we're going down our pipe. That'll just be weird and we'll go everywhere. We just get away from our park. That will look kind of weird. So let's just go down now. As you can see, uh, we go down, but huh, for some reason the uh, pixel travel thing isn't working, and 
I don't know, our players and coming back. Anyway, because I'm busy, I, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. The next episode will be part two of implementing pipes, and it will be mainly just bug fixes and other small implementations. So, someone you know is interested in learning how to program in Java, please send them this tutorial, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.